Hello everyone and welcome back to Raise Aerospace and Kerbal Space Program 2 where I've put together the stereotypical large rocket of KSP-2 to see what kind of payload it can lift. This is analogous to the Mainsail 7 which was the stereotypical large rocket of KSP-1 and it uses cross-feeding through the boosters, uh, what we used to call asparagus staging, I don't know if it's still called that. But uh, yeah, so these boosters go off first, they're cross-feeding into that one, which is cross-feeding into that one, which is cross-feeding into the core. The core is a little bit larger than the boosters in this case, because I thought that would be more aesthetically pleasing. But we are using the Mammoth engines this time, or Mammoth 2 engines, uh, because they are the highest thrust engines available. And it's just like this, there's no, upper uh, no separate upper stage. And we are trying to lift, uh, we are trying to lift two of these XL tanks. So that is, I think they're th these. Uh, so it's two, uh, 288 tons. So we'll be able to change that if it turns out that we need more or less. But yeah, 288 tons is the current capacity right now that we're trying for and we'll adjust as is possible. And it says 4,791 meters per second down there, but I'm not entirely sure that's true because it doesn't show any delta V on this decoupling, uh, which it should, and then very little here. So, yeah, I don't know how it all really shapes up, and we're just gonna have to test it. Is it gonna be stable? Is it gonna fall apart on the launch pad? Uh, is it gonna glitch out? I don't know. Let's find out. I've called it the Woolly Mammoth. I would be surprised if nobody's put this together already and called it the Woolly Mammoth 2. I mean, it's made out of mammoths, so of course it should be called Woolly Ma- Okay, yeah, this... Hmm... That didn't work very well. Well, I mean, why am I not surprised, really? Um... Let's try the runway. The runway has been better for me, I think. Uh, it'll hit the ground, but it might not all explode. Might not all explode. But maybe we just need more launch clamps. Altogether, it is 2,322 tons, so it's like a legit heavy lift launcher for Earth, uh, even. So maybe I shouldn't have the nozzles that close to the ground, but maybe that'll help stop it from crashing into the ground? I don't know. Well, it hits the ground. Oh, it does immediately explode. Of course there are struts from the boosters to the core, and I put them individually. Well, many more launch clamps, maybe. It's tough to get some on the core if that's what it wants. The probe core is the root part and it's up here. Oh, but when I click on the probe core, it doesn't like to let go because it it's so close to the fairing that it toggles the fairing wrench. Great. So what I end up having to do is move this over first and let's try and get it in the center or something. Output extra launch clamps. But maybe now there's enough clearance down below so that even if it drops down a little bit it's okay. Okay. It looks like this many clamps is okay. Now time warp. Not much EC in the probe core. Okay, out of time warp, wiggles. But no oh, we did have automatic destruction. Um don't revert. I want to recover this. Can I recover this? I guess not. I wanted to keep it daylight. Oh well, we'll have to time warp to daylight first. It doesn't look like we can time warp with this on the pad. And then I have to worry about it flipping too, because we haven't put fins, because, you know, fins are even more likely to drop off. Can we launch the Woolly Mammoth? I decided to go with an orange paint scheme because it occurred to me that I hadn't used an orange one, I don't think. and. Actual rockets do get painted orange, or have orange insulation on them anyway. So, yeah, fair enough. Let's try this. Okay, well, while it's possible. Uh, it says we don't have communication, but that's not right. Okay. And launch. 
Uh, uh... Well, I guess we'll have to have more struts or something. You know what? Maybe for this, for once, I'll turn off that. Uh, turn on the unbreakable joints thing. Shoot. Uh, unbreakable joints on. Let's see how that does. If there was ever a time to use it. I'm normally against such things. But it's an option. It does mean you're not a high level player, right? It's, uh. Well, it doesn't even say what difficulty you are. It's custom anyway. Uh, like, you're not a rocket scientist if you use that. Anyway. And launch. Okay. Are we serious about being unbreakable? Alright. It's unbreakable. Not very high thrust weight ratio, you see. We're carrying as much fuel as we can, so. It occurs to me for the rocket sled, maybe I should. Okay, first booster set set. Rocket sled, I should also do unbreakable joints. Maybe that'll make it easier. Okay, now we're five cores. Oh, it's turning too quickly. It's turning too quickly. No, we have to go steeper. No, 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 no. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, what happens <laughs> when it's got unbreakable joints, but it's going to end up in the water? Hmm. I guess we should check whether all the staging happens properly, and then we'll revert so that we can get a better trajectory. Okay, next set boosters. Oh, I took out one engine. Hmm. But that might be just because we're so low in the atmosphere. Fine, just point prograde. The payload does swing back and forth, but the core is down here. Well, down here, so hopefully it's not swinging too much. Unbreakable joints does not mean no wobbliness. Is it sucking fuel from this side or not? Well, this one seems partially full. Yeah, I guess it is sucking from that side, but slower than it needed to. Anyway, we're going to smash into the surface of the water. It's just a matter of what that actually does, I'm curious about. The music knows it's going to happen. Oh, okay. Okay, anyway. It's deeper. Okay. Ignition and launch. Yeah, the loss of thrust weight ratio when we released the boosters last time sort of meant that we ended up going shallower, so... Too shallow. Normally, you don't release a booster at that point. Okay, first set of boosters off. And now we'll turn. Still pretty slow. I mean, accelerating and everything, but still pretty slow. Okay, past the speed of sound. Going pretty steep this time. It's probably for the best. Okay, booster set. So with unbreakable joints, of course, the real limitation then becomes just lag. As far as how big we can build a rocket. This is certainly not the biggest one we can build as long as Unbreakable Joints is on. With Unbreakable Joints off, I wonder how big a rocket somebody can build in this version of KSP-2. This is just the simple, straightforward, super big rocket, right? This is the one that... Well, I wouldn't say it would be highly recommended. Because the cross-feeding thing is complicated and getting the separatrons right and everything. May it be better to cluster a whole bunch of mammoths on a core. Uh, an XL core instead of- these are large tanks only. 
Okay, booster set. Now just this core. We probably have too much Delta V here. Could we like fling this payload to the moon? Is it a good idea to separate the fairings right now? So many questions. Well, fairings. Ooh! Uh, go away. Yeah, alright. Well, thrust weight ratio is not a problem, also not excessive. Yeah, maybe we didn't even need to pitch up with the other stage. We will throttle down here. And that is because I don't fancy trying to turn with this thing. So I don't want the engine off. It's looking like we could transfer 288 tons to the moon with this. We'll just verify that. Ah, uh, well this is gonna be lopsided. But... Well, that's 70 kilometers, so that's orbit. And we have 1,127. Have we been draining the top tank somehow? Let me just make sure. They are full. Yep, uh, the top two tanks are full. And yeah, 288 tons, including their dry mass. So just, just to demonstrate, we are going to try and plot for the moon. Well, that's, uh, oh yeah, okay, that's Minmus. I, I just want to say the moon. We could probably do Minmus as well, but. So, who knew this would turn out to be an SLS moon-optimized sort of thing? Of course, it's only got the reaction wheel in the probe core, which is not great. I don't know how long it's going to take to turn this. Probably we'll need to use the engine to help turn it because it's not going to do it on its own like this. I've just been burning this whole time, it still hasn't managed to get to the maneuver node. Go. Oh, I tried to use my throttle. Okay, well we probably won't need to do for the full burn time. It's going away from the maneuver node. Stop that! It's a straight stack, this should not be happening. It's a straight stack, this thing gimbals, it should not be happening. Slow thrust, get back to where you're supposed to be. Uh, gimbal's allowed to do everything. Was able to control it during launch. Yeah, uh, it can't even get to prograde particularly well. Like, why are you going over here? Even if there was some slight wiggliness, I mean, it was able to control it on launch, for heaven's sakes. Oh, heck. Um, we'll, we'll just go around. It's just going all screwy. The default SAS mode is the only one that actually does good things at all. Oh, now it's deviating. I was just praising you! Why is it going off in this direction? I don't know. Come on, complete the burn before it goes... Oh no, it's gone too much. Well, we could have gotten this over to the moon on a proper trajectory. It's got a moon entry there, but obviously all this nonsense with it spinning around has caused problems. I was gonna think, you know, maybe I would just keep Unbreakable Joints on for... KSP2 for the, an extended period of time, just treating it like Kerbal Joint Reinforcement. However, I'm worried that turning Unbreakable Joints on is what causes this thing to rotate uncontrollably and prevented our engine from working properly, because there's no asymmetry on this. So I'm suspicious of Unbreakable Joints, though it could be anything really. When the engine's not running, it doesn't seem to have a phantom force on it or anything. So, I don't know. Alright, let's just revert. But 288, 288 tons... Oh, let's check that the fuel is still there. Yes, it is. So, it's all 288 tons to the moon. What's its capacity to low carbon orbit? Well, I guess we should check. 
We just need to reduce our apparent delta V by about a thousand. So we need to add more payload. But will it be able to get off the ground at all? We don't have too much room as far as our thrust to weight ratio goes. Oh, now it's reading 16,000 meters per second there. And that's not even the sum of these. That. Oh, now it says 4,580. Okay, now, now it's making some sense. Okay, so we need more than that. Not that much more, right? Uh, that's, what, 432 tons? It can barely get off the ground with that? I guess we'll try it. 432 tons. No, well, it fits. Okay, so now we've got a huge fairing. And why don't we have extra clamshelliness? And 432 tons in there. The problem is, uh, if you don't have any wing pieces, it doesn't care about the center of lift or pressure at all. As if the fairing and the nose cones don't produce pressure, right? It's just centered like that. So, in that respect, the little icons that the indicators don't tell you anything. So we can't judge from that. And we have 14,000 meters per second again. Okay, I'm just gonna say this low carbon orbit version. This is gonna struggle. All right. Right. Ignition. Okay. And launch. Okay. Oh, we're going a little bit sideways. Okay. Oh no. Oh no. But, but, but why? Why? Oh no, it's going down. It's going down. Oh, it's going sideways. Depends on your point of view. Okay. We'll just certify for 288 tons to the moon. I mean, right? It's good enough. I mean, what are you gonna do with that anyway? <laughs> so, yeah, we'll we'll, uh, we'll say just 288 to 88 tons to the moon or low carbon orbit. It doesn't matter where you're going. Just don't make it any bigger. All right. So, yes, with that result, I'm not gonna try it again. I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.